Hello guys, welcome to another quick technical breakdown uh, video of some rigging stuff that I've been doing lately. Uh, I tried to go more quick about this as it's a complex rig and I just have like 15 minutes for now. Uh, so yeah, welcome to this character. It is uh, an innkeeper and I just recently modeled this dress for her. Uh, and now I started to do some research and development uh, and thinking about how I will rig this. So the first thing that I do when I like try to rig cloth like this uh, is break it down into sections and see what and like figure out beforehand what the sections need to look like, what they how they need to behave. So uh, what needs to be end cloth, what would be solved with uh, static rigging uh, with joints and uh, computation based deformers uh, instead of simulation based deformers and end cloth. Um, so yeah, for this particular dress, I figured, for example, the skirt would be pretty much completely end cloth. Uh, this guy would be end cloth. The bar here, I figured I might be best with like some dynamic joint chains driven by hair. Uh, the belt can be static, just a skin cluster, that's fine. This guy has to be breaking down a little bit uh, more. So basically all of it would be static apart from the sleeves, the red cloth sleeves, those would be end cloth again. Um, yeah, and that's it. So obviously if you if you do have if you do have stuff that is end cloth, you don't need to focus too much on beautiful deformation uh, in the in the static rig because it's, the end cloth is going to override that anyway. But you might as well try to put in a little bit of effort in getting nicer deformation than just copied skin from body to to a skirt like this or to sleeves like this because it's going to leave very ugly deformation and the animator is not going to have a lot of fun uh, like animating that rig. Obviously, in a faster rig, you'd have to you, you can't afford more complex uh, solutions. But if the animator makes the animation, he wants to just quickly play blast it without the cloth. You might as well do something in the slower in, in slower level of detail rigs that allow for a nicer playback, allow for a nicer look in the playback. So um, for the dress and for, for the cloth, I'm pretty much using the same techniques for, for, like, uh, for both sections, for upper and lower bits. Uh, I'm going to show that to you now. So just a quick demonstration of how stuff deforms here. You can see how, how this dress slides over leg. Uh, and doesn't intersect too much with it. How nice it like um, when I, when I like move the leg out. How all of this also comes with it. Obviously it stretches, but at least it doesn't look completely terrible. So this is something that an animator could enjoy looking at more than it would just uh, a skin cluster. Um, because this is not a skin cluster that's working, or not just a skin cluster. Uh, same for the upper side. Um, especially this breast area was quite interesting to rig. Uh, as I modeled the character and the dress in a relaxed state, so this is the original state. Uh, obviously, this is not how the breast should, uh, how the dress, sorry, should actually look like when uh, on the final character. So my current rigging functionality has, uh, I added a set-driven key to a couple of breast control offset groups that generate uh, a nice push-up effect, as you can see there. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you here a little bit how all of this uh, happened. So as you can see, the bigger parts have just one wrap deformer. Um, and they're currently driven by a, lo a slightly lower resolution, uh, simplified versions of this thing. So let's just hide this dress, get this guy out. And you can see it's just pretty much just three active meshes. So we have the body costume slide mesh, we have the low resolution skirt wrapper and the low resolution top wrapper. So quickly showing you the slide mesh, it's basically just a copy of the body where I simplified the topology a little bit. I removed the hands and feet and the head and like the upper bit that doesn't collide with anything ever. 
um, I simplified some topologies down here, remove the belly button, uh, remove the nipples and now you can see it's a little bit interesting, a little interesting fact. Oh, so if I compare the, this mesh to the actual body mesh, let's just get these guys isolated. Transparency on. Uh, and then could be good if we turn off the push up. Like that. Okay. So get that. Now you can see that this mesh is basically really smoothed out from fr on the front here. It doesn't actually has the cavity between the two breasts. It's just like uh, a very smooth uh, transition from one to the other. And I need that in order to have the dress look naturally when it slides over this mesh. Because this mesh is actually the, the sliding geo that, that, that does all the slide. So you, you can see if, since I use the shrink wrap, which is based on normal uh, on vertex normal projections, if this mesh were to have the same cavity like the breast, this entire area from the middle would snap right into the body, which wouldn't look natural because obviously the cloth stretches from one top point to the other and doesn't like bend into the cavity. That's just not physically correct. So try to get that with this sort of mesh in there. Now I have a little bug in here because honestly when I turn on the push up you can see the weights are not quite as nice so I might need to correct either the weights and let me just see if I can quickly wait time with these guys apparently not no it's not looking very good I kind of did it. Um, so yeah, I might just throw in a skin deformer on top of it. Uh, the sea muscle skin deformer has a nice relax uh, operation that I'm going to show you soon. Um, so yeah, let me just quickly demonstrate this bit. I think the push up is, is currently live. So let's turn on wireframe. And you can see how this bit slides very nicely over this other mesh and if I move like one of the breast controls you can see how the breast again slides over the dress mesh very nice uh, this is very cool to get that nice sliding effect you could have like a, a, a an undressing shot where you just pull this guy down and you know lots of cool stuff could be done with this thing you can also use it for completely different stuff like just a uh, skin slide over musculature and stuff like that. It's completely possible. Um, so yeah, let's just quickly show you the input of one of these meshes because basically this is the mesh that then wraps to the dress and then this guy. So it's very simple. Uh, I have a skin cluster at the very beginning. Let's just turn off all the top bits. So this is the main, this is the base resolution of the mesh. I threw in a poly smooth face uh, to make the wrap a little bit smoother because the wrap doesn't have a nice uh, internal smooth. So I had to like smooth it beforehand. Makes it a little bit slower, but I think the the trade off for the, the deformation quality is it worth it. So there's a skin cluster here. I just copied from the main body to this guy, the skin cluster. Removed the body breast joint weights from this guy or I make them a lot less uh, intense and then added two extra joints one for each side that allow me to override it so a pretty it's a pretty standard way so you get a little bit of fall off here got some fall off on, on this guy and on top of the skin cluster I added the sea muscle system um, now, it's not it's not being driven by any muscles or something. It's basically just like select the mesh, go to muscle, skin setup, apply skin deformer, that's it. Um, inside this guy, I'm using the smooth and the relax operations. 
So I have the relax very high, uh, I think I have 8 iterations and 13.7 um, relax on compression magnitude, uh, a little bit more on expansion and then I have some smooth operations on expansion that basically allow me so if I were to turn off the smooth here doesn't make doesn't do much now but it helps a lot uh, on more extremes uh, to just like soften up the whole thing then obviously on top of that we have the shrink wrap so if I turn that on it basically just snaps this mesh to this guy uh, current inflation is set rather high but I think it has to be that high That's in order that the, the higher this inflation is, the, uh, you get less uh, artifacts from sharp geometry on your driving object. So this is something that you could actually do a good job with. Uh, I have, I think I have shape preservation iterations on. Uh, no, I do not. You could turn it on, it doesn't do a big job here, um, because I use the shrink wrap only on this cleavage area. I don't use it on the sleeves because this geometry is a little bit funky. Uh, you can see if it, if, we, if we would work with the normal vertex normal based shrink wrap, it would just go all over the place on geometry like this. Um, and since this is going to be end cloth anyway, the sleeves are not going to focus too much on that. Added some controls animators can, if, if, they, if they have fun doing it, just fix some of the intersections themselves, so that's free. Um, yeah, uh, and then basically that's it. Then after the shrink wrap, again I add the poly smooth face, set its divisions to one, and then I wrap this uh, the dress to this guy because now the deformation is, uh, as you saw, it's it's a lot smoother and nicer. So wrapping to this is going to give us a, a lot better results, and it's basically the same setup for down here. So let's just quickly turn off CMOS little shrink wrap. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave smooth face on just to have a better representation of this thing. And you can see now what the skin cluster looks like. And it's, ve it's very bad. You can see how I, I didn't focus too much on, uh, on, on painting nice weights because with just skin cluster from two leg joints, you can't do too much on a dress like this. It'll always intersect somewhere and stretch a lot and just be funky and, and all that. So I didn't bother too much about doing that. Instead, what I threw, what I did, is just throw a skin cluster, a uh, skin deformer on top of it, turn it on. That basically uh, has a very high uh, set of relax iterations. Uh, I think I'm using. Yeah, 40 iterations on everything. I'm not using any smooth because that removes too much of volume. Uh, that basically would cut off all of these guys and would make it a lot shorter. And then on top of that, we have the shrink wrap, which basically just pushes the guys back out. And that's it. Then I wrap these guys to the other guys and done. And then you have a very uh, a rather simple dress rig that holds up pretty well. You can see you, you never get like crazy intersections, it all behaves rather stable. It's pretty cool. So that's it for now. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments, send me a message, whatever. Uh, and see you next time. Bye.